Hello there, Brian here, your honest mechanic. Today we're talking about something that gets a lot of debate, redlining your engine. Is it actually bad or could it sometimes be good? Let's get into it. First off, what's redlining? In simple terms, it's hitting that red mark on your tachometer, your engine's maximum RPM limit. Now here's something most manufacturers won't tell you, which is good. They're actually pretty conservative with these limits. Your engine can usually handle more, but should you push it? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. So here's the quick answer. Redlining your engine isn't automatically bad if you do it right. But there's a bunch of important ifs we need to talk about. The most important thing, temperature. Your engine needs to be fully warmed up before you even think about pushing it hard. We're talking both coolant and oil temperature. In most cars, that means waiting until your temperature gauge hits the middle mark and driving normally for another 15 to 20 minutes to get the oil up to temp. Why does temperature matter so much? When your engine's cold, everything's slightly smaller than it should be. Metal parts haven't expanded to their proper operating size yet. Plus, cold oil is thicker and doesn't flow as well. Push a cold engine hard, you're asking for trouble. But here's where it gets interesting. Most mechanics, including yours truly, actually recommend occasional high rev driving. It's called an Italian tune-up, and here's why it works. Think about it, if you're only doing short trips, school runs, or grocery store drives, your engine never gets to stretch its legs, your valves, your fuel injectors, everything's just operating at minimum. It's like a person who only walks to their mailbox, things get sluggish. The Italian tune-up is simple, get on the highway, drive at higher speeds for about 20 minutes and let your engine breathe. And I'm talking about legal highway speeds here, nothing crazy. The magic happens when your engine hits those higher RPMs, your fuel injectors start spraying properly, your valves get a proper workout, and all that carbon buildup starts breaking down. Here's something most people don't realize. Load matters more than revs. Running at 3,000 revolutions per minute but flooring it up a hill puts more stress on your engine than cruising at 5,000 revolutions per minute on a flat road. It's about the pressure in the cylinders, not just how fast they're moving. Now let's talk about what can actually damage your engine. The real killer isn't redlining, it's what we call the money shift. That's when you accidentally downshift into the wrong gear and over-rev the engine. That can bend valves or throw a rod in seconds. Most modern cars have rev limiters to prevent damage during normal redlining, but they can't protect you from a money shift. Here's my professional advice. 1. Never push a cold engine hard, period. 2. If your car's well-maintained and fully warm, an occasional pull to redline won't hurt, in fact, it can be good for engine. 3. Listen to your engine. If it sounds rough up high and feels shaky, don't push it. The bottom line, most engines are built tough. They're designed to handle occasional high RPM use, and in many cases, it can actually be beneficial. But here's the key, don't overdo it. There's an old saying, a red line a day keeps the carbon at bay. While that might sound catchy, I personally recommend keeping it occasional and intentional. 